What's up everyone? Welcome back to Better Biomed. Today I've got a really unique device. Found it in my local Goodwill. I love going to Goodwill because they either have broken stuff, which I love going through broken stuff, or they have unique things that I've never seen before. And this just kind of takes the cake. What I have here is an electronic anti-snoring devices. It's plural. <laughs> and it says it's an oxygen concentrator and a CPAP. Hmm. Well, we can call BS on that immediately for a couple different reasons. Oxygen concentrator. I don't care what type of fan is blowing on your face. An oxygen concentrator uses a membrane to separate oxygen mo molecules from regular 21% oxygen air. Thus, it concentrates the oxygen in one space up to about 70%. Now, if this guy even gave me a 1% increase, then I will eat my hat. But this guy here, it's almost guaranteed just to be a fan. I could be wrong. It might have some mumbo jumbo inside it that I've never heard of before that would be fantastic. But uh, what I think it is, is just a fan that plugs on your nose. And uh, we are going to open it up. So you can see I paid $2.99 for this fine piece of medical technology right here. So a CPAP is a continuous positive airway pressure. And what it's used for is for obstructive sleep apnea. Now there's other types of sleep apnea, but obstructive sleep apnea is when your passages start to close up. And if you guys didn't know, when you wake up from anesthesia, they don't just give you a shot and miraculously you wake up. They shut off your air, okay? They shut off your air. And when your carbon dioxide builds up in your body, that's when you jumpstart your body and it gets you back up and going again. That's how you wake up from anesthesia. Now, uh, the same thing technically happens when you have obstructive sleep apnea. Um, either the rumbling of the snoring is what will create the apnea, or it's going to be that you're going to start desatting. And when you desaturate, that's when your oxygen falls in your bloodstream and your body gets the fight or flight response and it jumps to action and it wakes you back up. So it's going to be one or the other. And interestingly enough, why is it that all fine products that emanate from, well, countries with that kind of writing on them, <laughs> all fine products like that have USB mini and micro. USB-C, it needs to happen, folks. So anyway, it is on. You can hear it. <laughs> okay, guys. Well, I'll tell you what we're going to do. Uh, we can take a measurement now. Oh, I, I can see it's just two tiny little fans. Man, let's switch that over. Can I do the microscope? There we go. Okay. So you can see that there's four blade fans and there's two of them. We are so going to tear this apart. Take a look at that. There's one little fan. There's another one over there. Okay. All right. Okay, guys. Well, how about this? <sighs> We're not going to build up any kind of static pressure with those. Okay. So um, that's what you need for a CPAP. See, CPAPs work at between 4 and 20 centimeters of H2O. Which in millimeters of mercury, that is 2.94 to 14.71 um, millimeters of mercury. So what I have here is I have a manometer. I've got my NIBP 1040. It does have a manometer function. And I think, I think we might be able to do this accurately. Uh, how are we going to do this? Plug this guy in. It, as a silicone seal, it, it does seal. Okay. And how about this? Put this guy here. Oh, yeah. Not an issue. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and turn this guy on. I'm going to plug this guy in. I'm going to include it. We have absolutely nothing. So let me include the other nostril.
it is registering nothing. But look what happens if I just put my finger on the tip. This is how sensitive the 1040 is. It's got an excellent pressure transducer. Take a look at that. That pressure sensor is really, really detailed. Sorry, guys. I've got it so that y'all can't even see it right there. Okay. Look at that. I'm barely putting my finger on the tip, and it's going up in small increments. So if I put this guy here, in here, and I occlude it, for one nostril, I have nothing. If I include two nostrils, it doesn't register a thing. Okay, so clearly what we are going to do next is we're gonna go ahead and charge this guy. We're gonna give it a fighting chance. Right now, uh, what I do see is you are taking a wide open manifold, which is your nose, and you are obstructing it by making it go through this little device right here. Now, there's another thing to be weary of, and that is that this guy here clearly has some sort of lithium cell battery inside it. And if you have a lithium battery, we're going to open it up, we're going to find out. But if you have a lithium battery inside this guy, they have the ability to emit deadly fumes. And you literally have this thing right here plugged into your nose. So you are breathing in whatever this thing is going to give off. That's how wild it is. Look at this. I can open it up. You guys can see the micro fans. Oh my gosh. They're, these are not the type of fans that have static pressure anyway. In fact, those guys probably barely move any air at all. They're not, they're literally doing, they're, they're not doing anything. I can feel it moving here, but they're literally not moving any air whatsoever. And why would they? Because first off, they have really tiny blades. So the, the larger the blades and the closer they are, imagine like a jet engine. And those compressor fans on a jet engine, the blades are kind of closer together and they seal really closely to the edge of their, um, their housing. So this fan right here, look at, you've got wide open areas off to the side. Look at that. Those fans are not even close to creating a seal, so they're not going to develop any sort of static pressure whatsoever. Um, this thing here does have a little bit of vibration, and I don't know about you, but having something that vibrates inside my nose would be, drive me absolutely crazy, okay? <laughs> but I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and let it charge for a few hours, and the tiny battery, whatever's inside here, we're going to give it a fighting chance. We'll see if it can generate even 0.1 of a millimeter of mercury. Just, that's all I want, just point 0.1. And this guy is sensitive enough to do it. So, let's do that next. We'll come back in just a few moments. All right, folks, it is officially hours later. It's evening time now. And I've got the little device over here. It has been charging and it says that it's good to go. Tell you what, first off, let's see, does it sound any different? <laughs> oh my god this is clearly a scam product folks all right let's go ahead and turn this guy on let's give him the benefit of the doubt right okay there you can see my display and again this is a tight fit because this is silicone and no matter what like you should see watch i'll push down on this and you will see it register ready Let's go to manometer mode. There we go. And with this, yeah, ooh, that's sensitive. That is so sensitive. Okay, folks, if this thing works, which right there, that's a tight seal. Oh, let's put that jacket all the way around. Okay. The jacket's on, it is on. I'm going to occlude it. If I include it from here and here. Come on, give me something. Okay, let's try this other one. I don't even have point 
one of a millimeter of mercury. <sighs> you see the little fans, they're right there, they're running. They're, they're doing their darndest, that's for sure. <laughs> they're, they're running their little butts off. But uh, tell you what, let's go ahead and let's open it up and let's take a look and see what's under the cover. This guy, it's clearly, I, I don't even want to say it's a novelty item because you wouldn't buy this for somebody as a joke. It's just the fact that it's a scam. All right, and we have two tiny little brush motors right there. See the two little fans, a tiny little controller, and let's get me a smaller Phillips. There we go. Let's just go ahead and pull it all apart. Now, here's the thing. This product here, do you really want something like this crammed up your nose? Because imagine if the, the little fan just popped right off. That's cute. Um, imagine if the little battery that's in here leaked any sort of fumes or whatnot, which we know lithiums are, they have a tendency to do. Oh, yeah. And then, <laughs> it's not even like a good lithium right there. You see the little lithium polymer cell in there. Ah, guys, what can I say? This little thing right here, um, if that guy puffs up whatsoever, do you really want this like right here where you're going to inhale whatever it's given off? Definitely not, folks. Definitely not. So um, these tiny little propellers right here, first off, the diameter, they all it is is they spin, yes, but they're not even the correct diameter for the housing, you know? you have to have as close to clearance as possible in order to maintain static pressure. And as I said earlier, uh, the whole thing behind a uh, CPAP is that it maintains a static pressure in your airway, okay? So um, this guy here, there's no way, it, <laughs> it has even 0.1 of a millimeter of mercury of static pressure. It is an absolute, scam product they know it doesn't work because it was not designed to work now these fans right here they were only designed to spin and give you the impression that they're doing something because a large percentage of the world's population is gullible enough that they will believe absolutely anything and especially if you make it cheap people will buy it so i bought it for what 2.99 just to bring it here take it apart for y'all and I want you to know that it is perfectly fine to shove this thing up your nose and to go to sleep with it attached to your face because it passed the quality control. Take a look right there. QC pass, inspector number 11. How much do you want to bet they mass produce these guys right here? And they just throw them in every single package. There's no way that this was quality controlled. Yeah, this is what it is. Oh, they actually give you a instruction book exhaust port what intake port exhaust port. what 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 the heck so as as i said earlier there is no oxygen oxygen concentration here it is just a motor driver and it's a two channel motor driver that's all it's doing is it's spinning both those motors and it's acting like a charge controller for the lithium ion cell as well that's all it does. In order for it to be a oxygen concentrator, it has to provide you with higher than 21% oxygen, which is nominal atmosphere. This guy is a glorified fan and it doesn't even do that well, okay? So it's not concentrating anything. It's not even concentrating air because in other words, we would detect pressure on this guy here. So it is what it is, folks. But uh, rest at ease because it has passed quality control. <laughs> anyway, folks, there you have it. Um, absolute scam product. You see them. Have a good laugh. Don't buy it. This is the QC 001 QC. How irony. <laughs> QC is the brand. Quality control is the brand. There you have it. Uh, oxygen concentration slash CPAP anti-snoring device. Hmm. You've seen it here, folks. 
Thanks for watching. I'm here to assist you with all your test equipment needs, from multimeters and test weights to patient simulators and x-ray analyzers. If you need guidance or you have any questions, please don't hesitate to write me at jbarber at bcgroupinternational.com. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more content. I'd love to hear your thoughts, so drop a comment below with what you'd like to see in future videos.